of you. Old Geppetto was a good carpenter. Once he found a piece of wood. He decided to carve a puppet from it. He made a puppet of boy and named him Pinocchio. Old Geppetto felt very happy to see his son. Pinocchio had a long nose. Pinocchio was very naughty. He would do one feet or other. One day, old Geppetto was fed up of his son's daily pranks. So, he decided to send him to school. Instead of going to school, Pinocchio sold his school books and went to see a puppet show. A large crowd had gathered there to watch the show. All of a sudden, the owner of the puppet show chanced to see Pinocchio. Seeing another puppet, the owner of the puppet show became very angry. But when Pinocchio said sorry to the owner, he was very surprised to see a talking puppet. He smiled and he gave him a few gold coins. Taking the gold coins in a handbag, Pinocchio moved further. He came across a cat and a fox on the way. Both the cat and the fox wanted to snatch the gold coins from Pinocchio. Later, in the dead of night, the cat and the fox disguised themselves as robbers and tried to snatch the gold coins from Pinocchio. Harry, who always helped Pinocchio, came there to save him. He lied to her that he went to school daily. The more he lied, the longer his nose grew. Still, Pinocchio did not change. Once, some boys tempted Pinocchio to go to the circus with them. Without thinking anything, Pinocchio accompanied the boys to the circus. There, the ringmaster turned them all to donkeys, for they all had misbehaved with the ringmaster. They all were on the horns of the lima. Somehow, Pinocchio escaped from there and jumped into the sea to regain his wooden figure. He regained it but swallowed by a whale. Earlier, Geppetto, in search of Pinocchio, went to sea but was swollen by the same whale. Pinocchio saw Geppetto inside the stomach of the whale. Somehow, they succeeded in lighting a fire in the whale's stomach. The smoke caused the whale to cough and with its fall, they both were thrown out. Old Geppetto lost his sense, but Pinocchio did not lose courage and took him out of water. Old Geppetto felt elated having been saved by his son. He patted the back of Pinocchio and blessed him. Now Pinocchio repented all his mistakes. Next morning when he got up his wooden figure was turned into a human boy. This 
is the story of Pinocchio. Hope you liked it. We'll come with another good story. Thank you so much. The Princess and the Pea Once there lived a prince who wanted to marry a real princess. He went to the length and breadth of the land in search of a real princess but had no luck. He kept finding faults in every suitor he met. Some were too big, some too thin, while some were too short. One evening, there was a terrible storm, along with thunder, lightning and heavy rainfall. Suddenly, there was a knock on the door. A tired and drenched girl stood outside. Please let me in. I am a princess, she said. They let her in and examined her carefully. The rain had soaked her clothes and water had run from her hair into her shoes. She does not look like a princess at all, thought the queen. But the queen was kind and offered to let her stay the night. She was given fresh clothes and was led to the bedroom. The queen then crept into the guest bedroom and put a tiny pea underneath the bottommost mattress. She then ordered the servant to make the bed with not one but twenty mattresses all piled on top of each other. The queen thought that if this girl was a real princess, she would not be able to sleep on this. The next morning, when the princess woke up, the king and the queen asked her how she had slept. Very badly. I climbed to the top mattress but all night I tossed and turned. There must have been something hard underneath the mattress that kept me awake, she replied. The king and the queen were overjoyed. They were convinced that she was a real princess. For only a princess could feel a pea through 20 mattresses and quilts. Finally, the prince's search for the real princess was over. The prince and the real princess got married and lived happily ever after. This is the story of the princess and the pea. Hope you liked this story. We'll come with another good story. Thank you so much. The Thirsty Crow Once upon a time, a wise crow lived in a jungle. One hot summer day, as he was flying over the city, he felt thirsty. He flew over many houses but could not find water. Then, suddenly he saw a pot on a terrace. He flew down hoping to have a refreshing drink. He came close to the pot and looked into it. There was a little water in it. But the crow was happy. He climbed onto the pot and put his beak inside. Alas! His beak was too short to reach the water that lay at the bottom of the pot. He looked around and saw some stones lying in a corner. An idea came to his mind. He flew and picked up a stone in his beak. He went to the pot and threw it in. The water level rose. He put his beak in the pot 
but could not reach the water. He did not give up. He picked another stone and threw it in the pot. Yes, the water level rose again. Still, the water level was low and he could not reach it. The crow was tired by then, but he was determined to drink the water. So, he continued to pick up stones and throw them into the pot. With every stone, the water level rose. Finally, the water level reached the brim. The crow was happy to see that his efforts had paid off. He dipped his beak in and started drinking. He happily flew back home after getting refreshed. The moral of the story is where there is a will, there is a way. This is the story of the thirsty crow. Hope you liked it. We'll come with another good story. Thank you so much. Oliver Twist A long time ago, on a street of old England, a young lady was taking her evening stroll. Suddenly, she felt weak and collapsed on the pavement she was walking on. A crowd of people gathered around her. What happened to her? We should get her some help. They quickly took the lady to a nearby shelter and discovered that she was expecting a baby. After nursing her for a few hours, she gave birth to a baby boy. As luck would have it, the poor woman lost her life while delivering the boy. The people in the shelter sent the baby boy to an orphanage and there he got his name Oliver Twist. The orphanage was a small and miserable place. The kids were given small portion of food barely enough to fill their stomachs. They were not treated well. One day, a man came to visit the orphanage. Oliver is too old to live here now. He should start working. I shall take him to the shelter, the man said. So when Oliver turned nine years old, the man took him to the work house. He, along with several other young boys, was made to work for very long hours. They weren't paid good sums and were given only bland girls. The boys starved every day. One afternoon, they decided that one of them would go ahead and ask Mr. Bumble, the caretaker of the orphanage, for more food. To decide who would be the one to ask for, they turned a bottle and it pointed at Oliver. Reluctantly, Oliver stood up from his chair and went over to Mr. Bumble. Can I have some more wool? Oliver timidly asked. Mr. Bumble became red and shouted in rage. He said, I take care of you every day. How dare you ask for more? Isn't it that enough for you? You can't stay here anymore. And once again, Oliver was sent off. This time, he was sent to the city undertaker 
Mr. Sotherberry's house. He is too young for this task. I don't like his work. The undertaker remarked and banished Oliver from the job. Now, poor Oliver had nowhere to go. He wandered aimlessly across the London street, hoping to find a shelter and some food. Even the workhouse was better than this, he thought. While walking, he came across a small boy about his own age. The boy saw the gloomy state that Oliver was in and approached him. I am Jake Dawkins. You can call me Artful Doja. Do you want to come with me to a place where there are birds and food to eat and no rent to pay? Oliver could not believe what he had heard. A flicker of hope rose in him. He followed Doja to an apartment. A man nearly in his thirties greeted him. He said, I am fighting the owner of this place. You are welcome to stay here, provided you follow some rules. It was minutes later that Oliver realized that all of the boys living in Fagin's house were thieves. To be able to stay in that apartment, one had to pickpocket and commit robberies. Come on, Oliver. Let me show you how it's done. Doja held Oliver's hand and took him out on a busy street. While Oliver stood at the corner, Doja ran and swiftly moved his hand around a man's watch. Look how easy it is to steal these things. Artful Doja blinked with happiness as he shoved Oliver the watch he had just robbed. It is your turn now. Go and get that man's silk handkerchief from his pocket. Doja gave Oliver a nudge. Oliver could not move and felt uneasy doing an unlawful act. Okay, I will do it, but the next one is yours. Doja ran towards the man. He once again managed to steal, but the man had seen them both. He quickly shouted, Police! Police! Quickly, Doja put the stolen item in Oliver's hand and escaped. The police caught hold of Oliver and handcuffed him. I didn't do it, Oliver pleaded. Let go of him. He didn't steal my hanky. The other boy was the thief, the man said. The man's name was Mr. Brownlow and he knew Oliver was innocent. Mr. Brownlow felt sad for the boy after looking at his dejected state. Kind Brownlow offered Oliver to leave with him. Oliver, having nowhere else to go, instantly agreed. His days were pleasant there and full of happiness. Oliver and Mr. Brownlow established a loving relationship, one that of father and child. One day, while going to the bookseller to return some books, Oliver noticed something. Behind the brick wall at the end of the street were Fagin and Artful Doja. Frightened, Oliver started to run away, but the evil men finally managed to catch up with him. Come with us now. You will tell 
someone of our hiding place we have to take you the man kidnapped the poor oliver yet again oliver was forced to carry out robberies and break in houses one night reluctantly oliver had to break into a big mansion of a wealthy lady before he could proceed a servant saw him and shot him on the arm other boys promptly escaped the sight leaving oliver behind once again scared of the consequences oliver told the owner of the house mrs mailey the truth he informed her that he had no intention to commit a crime but was under pressure from falchin and his boys mrs mailey and her niece rose decided to keep the young lad under their care and nursed him back to good health with love and warmth of mailey's house oliver soon recovered he formed a wonderful bond with mrs mailey and rose upon learning about oliver's previous caretaker mr brownlow rose decided to reunite them after months of searching she finally could find him oliver is that you mr brownlow was very happy to see the young oliver once again oliver hugged brownlow and all was well except one small task rose brownlow and oliver were determined to catch the criminals fanjin and doja after a few weeks with the help of oliver they could finally trace them down arrest them officer rose exposed the hiding place of fanjin and his boys it was a happy ending as oliver danced around his three favorite people mrs mailey rose and mr brownlow from that day on they all lived together peacefully in a small village of england this is the story of oliver twist written by charles dickens hope you like this story we'll come with another good story thank you so much three little pigs once upon a time three little pigs left home to seek their fortune as they walked along they came across a vast uninhabited land they decided to build their house there the first pig was lazy he did not want to work hard so he built his house with straw the second pig was also lazy and built his house with sticks once the house was ready they spent the time dancing eating and sleeping but the third pig worked hard as he was building his house with bricks the other two pigs mocked him but he kept working one day a wolf came to the straw house he saw the pig he asked hello mr pig may i come in the pig saw the wolf's big paw and was scared he refused to open the door the wolf huffed and puffed at the straw house the house fell with a huge thud 
the pig ran to the second pig. He told the pig about the wolf. The terrified pig then took shelter inside the house of six. Soon after, the wolf arrived. He saw that now there were two pigs. Slurp. He wanted to eat them for dinner. He asked to be let in, but they refused. The wolf got angry and again huffed and puffed. Thud. The house of sticks crumbled and fell. The terrified pigs ran to the third pig who lived in the brick house. They told him about the big black wolf who had destroyed their house. The third pig said, Do not worry, we are safe here. Soon, the hungry wolf reached the brick house. He saw the three pigs and was hungrier than ever. He demanded to be let in, but they refused. So, he huffed and puffed, but the house did not fall. He tried and tried till he fell down, but the house stood still, and the three pigs were very happy. The moral of the story is, hard work is the key to success. This is the story of the three little pigs. Hope you like this story. Welcome with another good story. Thank you so much. Two wise thoughts. Once there was a small and beautiful village. Only a few hundred people lived there. The village had lush green fields where gods grazed. A river flowed nearby and across it was a narrow bridge. One day, one of the gods decided to cross the other side of the river. As he walked along the bridge, he saw another god coming from the opposite side. He wondered, Oh no! Now what am I going to do? Soon the other god came closer. Now both the gods were standing in the middle of the bridge. They looked at each other wondering who would move. Hello brother, said the second god. Would you mind going back? so that I can get to the other side. Oh, why should I? I got here first. You go back, so that I can reach the other side, said the first god. Both the gods were angry. They locked horns and started pushing each other back and forth. Soon, they both fell into the water and drowned. Sometime later, Two other gods wanted to cross the bridge and get to either side. These gods also started arguing. But this time, one of the gods said, If we fight, we might fall into the water. I have a plan. You can cross over me and go on your way. Then I will go on my way. Yes, yes, that's a good idea, said the other god. Soon, the first god lay down on the bridge and the second god crossed over him. Then, the first god got up, they said their goodbyes and went on their way. The moral of the story is, in tough situations, remain calm and think of a good solution. This is the story of two wise gods. Hope you enjoyed the story. Welcome with another good story. 
Thank you so much. The hare and the tortoise. A hare and a tortoise lived in the woods on the outskirts of the village. Though they were good friends, the hare always made fun of tortoise as he could not run or walk fast. One day, the tortoise was fed up. He told the hare, You are proud of being able to run faster than me. We should have a race and see who is faster. The hare was happy. He thought, I can easily run faster than this tortoise. They decided to have the race the next day. The next morning, the hare and the tortoise were at the starting point. As soon as the race began, the hare ran as fast as he could. The tortoise walked slowly towards the finishing line. Soon, the hare reached closer to the finishing line. He got tired. He thought, the tortoise will not reach any time soon. Let me take a nap. As soon as I see him, I will run and cross the finish line. Thinking this, the hare was soon asleep. The tortoise walked slowly, taking small steps. After a long time, he reached the place where the hare was sleeping. He heard the hare snore. The tortoise looked at him, but he did not stop. He walked a few more steps and crossed the finishing line. After a long wait, the hare woke up. He looked for the tortoise, but he did not see him. He thought, the tortoise is still far behind, but he may come any time soon. Let me cross the finish line and wait for him. But as he ran towards the finish line, he was surprised. He saw the tortoise sitting under the tree waving at the hare. The moral of the story is slow and steady wins the race. This is the story of the hare and the tortoise. Hope you liked it. We'll come with another